Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing and absolutely incredible day. In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about Shopify and how you can start your dropshipping journey through this absolutely immaculate and amazing e-commerce software. So to start things off, we're going to come over to Shopify.com and once you're into Shopify.com, we're going to create an account with it. So to create an account with it, what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and click on start free trial and it's going to take you into the store creation. Now, once you go into the store creation, it's going to tell you to get started and it's going to ask you a few questions where it's going to say, you know, which of these best describes you. You could go with I'm just starting. I'm already selling online or in person. I'm going to go with I'm just starting and click on next. Then it says, where would you like to sell? I'm going to click an online store and click on next. And it says, what do you plan to sell first? I'm going to go with drop shipping products and click on next. Once we do that, it says, where will your business be located? Uh, you're obviously going to add in your business location. So in my case, it's Pakistan and you can go ahead and add, you know, whatever location you have. And once you do that, it's going to bring you here where it's going to ask you to sign up with these different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and click on sign up with email and I'm simply going to go ahead and add an email for myself and uh, sign in with that. So I'm going to go ahead and be using a temp mail for now. You don't necessarily need to follow this step. You can simply go ahead and use any other email that you have, but I'm going to go with this. Okay. And once we're over here, let me show you what to do from here. So what you're going to do is you're simply going to be adding your password in this section. And once you add your password, you're simply going to click on create Shopify account. Now, once you're creating your Shopify account, it's going to ask you for your password again. So you're going to make sure to reconfirm it and reassure it. And once you reassure your password, what's going to happen from there is it's going to directly log you in. So when it logs you in, let me show you what the interface looks like. So once you come over here, it starts loading and the screen starts loading. And what happens from there is it's going to bring you to building your store. So once it brings you to building your store, what's going to happen from there is you are going to be taken into this section, which is basically your basic dashboard. OK, now, once you're in your dashboard, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be downloading some application which will basically allow you to you know start your job shipping so in my opinion i would always suggest users to go with some application like uh, cj job shipping or maybe spocket or deezers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be adding cj job shipping for myself so for that we're going to click on add apps and we're going to click on shopify app store now once you click on your shopify app store it's going to basically load things in and it's going to bring you here now, once you are over here, what you're simply going to do is you're going to search up CJ. Just search up CJ. You can write dropshipping if you want to, but you're, I'm just simply going to search up CJ. Once you search up CJ, it's going to bring you here where it says CJ dropshipping much faster. Now, once you go here, you're going to click on open app. And once you click on open app from there, it's going to start authorizing things where it's going to bring you here. It's going to ask you to agree the terms. We're going to click on login and authorize. If you have an account, you're going to do that. Or if you don't, you're simply going to go ahead and sign up. Sign up process is pretty simple. You're going to add an email. Then you are going to go ahead and add a password for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly add a password. I'm going to confirm this password as well real quick. There we go. And once you do that, you're going to agree to their terms and click on next. Once you do that, it's going to ask you for a username. Just add anything random, to be honest. And you're going to add your name. You're going to add your phone number. And once you do that, you're going to click on continue. Now, once you click on continue, it's going to start loading you in. And once it starts loading you in, it brings you here to a user questionnaire where it says, which platform are you running your store on now? Which is obviously Shopify. I'm going to choose how many orders I process and what categories do I work in? And once we do that, we're going to submit things and it's going to load us here where it says authorization is now a success. So once your authorization is a success, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to go ahead into your uh, store over here and from here what we're going to want to do is we're going to go to the main cj dashboard where we are going to start accessing all the drop shipping products so if we scroll down here you're going to see all these things you know different products to work with different products to choose from and you know really fun stuff that you can add for your design so it's all these things that are going to allow you to start working with uh, your drop shipping maneuvers. So once we're over here, let's say I'm going to go ahead with uh, a few products like this. Let's go with a night galaxy projector. Once we go with that, you're going to go with this. OK, it's a DIY stainless steel flask. And then let's go with some heated men's puffer jackets. So I'm going to load all three of these in. 
And once we load all three of these in, we're going to scroll down here. And as you scroll down, it's going to, you know, take you into loading. So I'm just going to wait for it to do that. And once it's loaded in, what you're going to do from here is you're simply going to click on list. And once you click on list, it's going to bring you here. So first of all, you're going to go ahead and enter your store name. You're going to tell them where it's shipped from, where it's shipped to. And once all of that is done, you know, you're pretty much good to go. So you're just going to wait for it to, you know, process your authorization. And uh, that's pretty much about it. So once your authorization is processed, as I stated, you're simply going to click on list. And once you click on list, it's going to ask you to enter your store name. Now, in the case that it says that no data is entered on your store, you're simply going to go ahead and click on my CJ. And once you click on my CJ, it's going to take you into your CJ dropshipping dashboard. Now, once you go into your CJ dropshipping dashboard over there, it's going to load you into this section. And once you're loaded into this section, what's going to happen is you're going to scroll down where it says store authorization. You're going to click on this and you're going to click on Shopify. And once you click on Shopify, it's going to open things up over here. And now, as you can see, my store is properly integrated. So now it's going to tell me that my store is good to go. So once you have chosen your store, I'm just uh, going to get out of this. And now we're going to click on list once more. And uh, once everything is done, I'm going to add my recommended listing pricings. And once all of that is done, you're going to select the store to ship to the place where the orders are essentially going to go. And once all of that is done, you're going to start drop shipping your products. And once you drop ship your products, all those will appear in your product section over here. So let me show you what the outlook of these will look like. So again, once this loads up, it's going to verify that your store has been properly authorized. And once your store is authorized, simply, as I stated, you're going to click on list. I'm going to give you all of this. Make sure that your store's data is properly entered. Once your store data is entered, you're going to add in the shipping information. Click on recommend listing prices. You're going to click on listed now. And once you click on listed now, from there, it's going to bring you here to your Shopify store where it's going to start adding all of the products that you are working with. It's going to add all of your necessary products and you're basically going to be good to go, you know? So that's pretty much about it. Now, once that is done, what's going to happen from there is you simply uh, go ahead and use your products, add it to your stores. And once you add it to your stores, you're going to start getting your orders from different places and once you get your orders from there you're gonna go ahead and uh you know simply uh start drop shipping and the thing is that the orders that you get are gonna be seen over here so uh once your orders are done they're gonna be seen in uh, you know orders over here you can fulfill your orders you know adding different inventories you know you're pretty much good to go amazon drop shipping tutorial hello everyone welcome back to another video in this video i'm going to be showing you how you can do drop shipping on amazon now if you want to do drop shipping on amazon you are going to need some type of provider okay to help you do proper drop shipping so there's a lot of drop shipping providers but the best one in my opinion that would work well because normally drop shipping on your amazon would get banned because drop shippers cannot do business on amazon amazon does not approve of that type of business so if you actually want to get sturdy and uh you know get a proper drop shipping business up and running on amazon what we're going to do is we're going to go here and there's a platform called deezers so Deezers is where you can start drop shipping. Okay, it's normally connected with AliExpress as their provider, but what happens is the products that you get on Deezers are off of your Amazon products. Okay, you can actually add your Amazon in products into your Deezers. You're going to add their links and everything should work pretty easily. So what you're going to do is you're going to sign in with this. And once you sign in with this account, you're going to connect it to your actual Amazon account. Make sure you have an Amazon account. Without that, this will not work. But once you do that, it should pretty much be done for you. Hi, guys. In this video, we're going to go over the new BART AI prompts. In this particular example, we're going to use BART to help us to build an e-commerce brand, something probably related to dropshipping or an original brand with original label. In previous videos, if you saw my channel, we tested BART for using the settings, Google Maps, using for recipes, using for building resumes. You want to make sure you check out the other videos as well. Let's jump onto this example over here. So first of all, you want to scroll down and go to the prompt section and let's click on the prompt. 
In our example today, we are going to ask Bart to help us to build an e-commerce store. So, let's jump in. I want to build an e-commerce store on, let's say, eBay or Etsy. Please suggest uh, trending products I can sell. I can sell and marketing strategy strategies. Let's see what are the basics according to Google Bart on this topic and how they can actually help us, right? It was very helpful with the maps. Okay, choosing the platform and training products to sell online requires some initial research. Okay, platforms, eBay. Okay, so Bart AI generates information from Wikipedia over here. We see the logo. It gives you some pinpoints and main difference between Etsy and eBay, right? You will compete with established sellers and lower priced items. Focus on unique or hand to find products in complete competitive pricing. Okay, so eBay, according to uh, Bart, it gives us like very good due diligence saying that, you know, if you choose eBay, you're going to compete with very, very strong competition. People who are selling at cheap, right? So we all know where is the competition. Uh, usually it's harder to make money. The market is usually saturated. Let's see what Bart AI is saying about Etsy. According to Bart AI, ideal for handcrafted and vintage items. Stand out with high quality photos, detailed description and strong brand identity. Trending products. So, okay, that's good. That's like we just got like a, like a research for dropshipping, right? Essentially, just with one prompt. How amazing Bart is, right? In comparison with ChatGPT. Okay, trending products. Once you choose the platform, explore sustainable and eco-friendly products, reusable water bottles, bamboo utensils, upcycled clothing, okay. Personalized items. So we got one recommendation, which is very generic, obviously for eBay, and it gave us a, a recommendation for handcraft or, or something that is customizable, that is like perfect for Etsy, right? As you can see, juries, uh, with custom engraving, phone cases, printed photos, pet accessories. Okay, comfort and wellness products, candles, diffusers, blankets, cushions. Interesting. Tech accessories, wireless chargers, phone stands, portable seekers. I want to go one step ahead and make things a little, a little more interesting. Let's ask, can you give me information from google trends about most searched products so far for 2024 now things get a little complicated let's see how the Bart is going to get over the challenge. Okay, we do get some results. Wow, it's still early in 2024. Google Trends does offer some interesting insights into the most search products. Okay, guys, we're, we're getting ahead of the competition. That this is why you have to follow and subscribe to the channel. You just, you just learn something very easy for free that you, you probably it will cost you hours and hours and hours to learn about okay let's see here is the glimpse based on various regions and categories this is the global category okay air purifiers okay sustainable and eco-friendly products okay with the reusable water bottle we saw that smart home devices the popularity of the smart home technology continues to grow with searches and devices like thermostats Lightning systems, doorbell seeing significant increase. Gaming laptops and consoles. With the release of new consoles, more powerful laptops, 
searches for these products are particularly high among younger demographics okay guys now we're getting into the most important part the united states searches okay peloton bikes this is surprising we all know peloton uh, it's down big time the stock has lost 80 percent of its value so let's see Despite facing some challenges in recent months, Peloton bikes remain a popular search item in the US. This suggests continued interest at home fitness solutions, which is cool. Electric vehicles, people are looking to buy Tesla or Ford. Uh, as you can see, this is among the most searched brands. Travel, after two years of pandemic restrictions, people are eager to travel again. Searches for flights, hotels, and vacation rentals are and seeing significant increase in the US. Amazing, we're having UK as well. Let's let's see the UK. The cost of living in UK. UK is facing a cost of living crisis with rising prices of wood. So this everything is a problem over here, guys. You need to think about solutions that you can provide or turn into a business ideas. Very easy. Queen Elizabeth II okay taking place in june 2024 and sorry generating a lot of interest searches for related products like like uh, uh, like mugs uh, okay some like merchandise okay gardening okay this looks cool gardening remains a popular post time in the uk and searches for related products like seeds tools and plants are steadily increasing you know what this means right all my uk friends now can be looking into capitalizing on some drop shipping seeds tools and plants for gardening as you saw over here guys it is very easy it takes just a couple of seconds all we gotta do is to pull up the right prompts and have a good ideas this is how simple it is to extract information and utilize part ai don't forget to subscribe and follow for more also hit the like button guys Hi guys, in today's video, we are going to go through what is TikTok shop, how you can make money with it, how much money you can make with it, what are the requirements, how you could apply and essentially, is it actually worth it? Let's dive in. First thing, we want to launch the TikTok app. When you're at your account, I want you to go ahead and click on the upper right corner where you see the three straight lines. When you have this pop-up menu, I want you to click on the first option, which is creator tools. This is where the magic happens. There is a special menu over here. It's called monetization. And I want you to scroll through the section that is called Tic Tac Shop. There is a two different shops. One is for creator and the other one is for seller. Essentially, the first one over here is if you want to make money as an affiliate. Uh, in this particular example over here, you can earn a commission with Tic Tac Shop Affiliate. You can simply link a products from other people's, uh, you know, stores. For example, you're making content about, let's say, running or gym, right? And there are people who are selling gym equipment or selling gym uh, clothes or gym supplements, right? And you can essentially go and under your videos, you can tag their products. You can put your products, their products into your account. So when people shop from your account, you can simply earn commission. In this particular example, uh, the requirements and the eligibility stands that first of all, your account should not be posting anything that is against uh, the TikTok community guidance. Uh, you should have over 5,000 followers, which is half of the requirements for creativity program beta, which I believe guys is very, very possible. And of course, you should be at least 18 years old, which again is very, very easy. I think this uh, it's, a, it's a good program. I have another TikTok account. I have over 70,000 followers on another one. Uh, I've listed plenty of items. Honestly, guys, I haven't sold anything. So I don't know. Maybe my items are too expensive or maybe the niche is different. So you want to make sure you list items that are very, very reliable to your audience, right? Don't list like, a, uh, you know, musical instruments or something if, if your page is not for, you know, musicians. The second uh, shop over here, guys, is for uh, sellers. Essentially, this is your creator. And instead of you selling other people's gym equipment or gym clothes, you're selling your own. So let's say you found someone in China or elsewhere who can, 
you know, manufacture a large amount of, of goods and can ship the goods and has a facility and, you know, can expedite uh, and ship all the items. Essentially, over here, you create your own account. And this is for, uh, you know, US only, simply because I am from the US. But uh, you can essentially switch to other countries. And currently, this is what is available. Uh, you have Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Singapore, and United Kingdom. Uh, probably it will be uh, rolling over in other countries as well. Uh, very important over here is that you, you know, should have your TikTok uh, business account to log in over here. So uh, you need to have a separate login simply because this is going to show you your, you know, analytics of your business, analytics of, of your own uh, performance. You could essentially click uh, sign up with your TikTok account, but you're still going to have a separate note. And again, as you can see the examples, people tend to uh, make more money if they're selling something that they are very, very good at. So usually, as we see over here, they're selling cosmetics, they're selling makeups. Uh, I don't know why it's only <laughs> women's on the example, but uh, there's uh, some success stories. Someone who, who, who got over 1.5 million uh, views and you know he had 15,000 orders and he made uh, live, we're talking about live sales, over $350,000. Again, this is sales, guys. This is not profit, again. Uh, this is just the revenue. Uh, I think it's it's worth trying, especially if you're like this one of these creators who are uh, really making uh, tutorials about how you know to do makeup, how to you know lose weight, how, something that is connected with activity that people can really you know see you trying it or see you using it, so you will be able to sell more. All we gotta do is to sign up over here, and this is how it works, guys. Essentially, uh, it will take time for uh, TikTok to, uh, you know, to process your request. And essentially, when you sign up, uh, TikTok will uh, generate your account and will be able to create a new spreadsheet where you should agree to the terms and, and conditions. And then you can proceed and, and start uh, working towards. The process of approval, uh, they're going to send you, uh, you know, two to six days after they review your application. Uh, also, then you, then you have to link your original TikTok account. Like I mentioned, there is a split in between. So you will be able to get verified and, you know, start showing the content uh, during your live streams. For more tips and tricks like this, guys, subscribe and come back for more. Hi, guys. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Bart AI to make your market research, to select products that you're going to sell and to create a business plan for your either e-commerce store or dropshipping business. Okay. First thing I want you to go ahead, create an account and log in into Google Bart AI. When you come over here, you want to make sure that you give Google Bart AI most detailed and precise questions and prompts. Okay, so you will get the better answers. First thing you want to say, I am looking to start an e-commerce, an e-commerce store. Okay. Focused on drop shipping. Please help me research popular niches and products that are currently popular in the Google search and also uh, help me create a business plan. That's it. Let's see. We give a pretty detailed prompt. Usually Bart AI is doing a fantastic job, guys. Usually it's doing much better job than ChatGPT and, and even the co-pilot of Microsoft in comparison. So let's see. Hot niche is over here, guys, for dropshipping in 2024 for free. 
eco-friendly products, bamboo straws, reusable water bottles, organic clothing, trending, home and garden products for improving comfort of the organization like ergonomic furniture, smart home gardens, health and wellness, fitness trackers, yoga mats, meditation apps, pet supplies, high quality toys, tech gadgets, funny trending products, Google Trends. So according to Google Trends, utilize Google Trends to business plan no i want more specifics can we get more specific about the data from google trends can we that's the question over here guy absolutely to narrow down the google trends research i need some additional information what interests you with the hot niches mentioned, for example, are you more drawn to the sustainable fashion? Nope. I would uh, look for simple, small, I would say gadgets or tools. Let's see. We're looking for something small, easy shipping, guys, easy returns. Uh, you know, everything will be much easier. Trading gadgets and tools. Okay, we have a cable wraps. We have charging dogs, portable phone stands, wireless earbuds, cleaning kits, kitchen guides, avocado slicer, egg yolk. That's very good, guys. That's very, very good. It's just We just type like maybe four or five different prompts and we, we end up with exact match of, of our search queries, right? And this is based on Google Trends. This is not coming from, you know, anonymous website or something. So obviously it is possible. And I also going to give them uh, eight stars out of them, the best performing AI chatbot over here so far, guys. Please make sure to check out my other videos on Copilot and on, on uh, Bing AI chat. Now, if you want to go ahead and make money in uh, a more bulked way then i would suggest you get into creativity program beta it's a new beta that tiktok has introduced and the eligibility is only you need to be a u.s based account at least 18 years of age have at least 10,000 followers have at least 100k views in the last 30 days now the way to join is just go to your settings go to creator tools you're going to click on creator fund and then you can switch at the bottom of the page to creativity program beta. Now do know that you can't switch back to the creator fund. You will stay in creativity program beta. And uh, what that does is creativity program beta is going to give you so many more rewards than you're supposed to get on your creator fund. It's actually crazy. And trust me, you're going to love this. So that's how you're going to make money on TikTok. Then I want you to click on the lower right side, click on your profile. Then I want you to click on the top right corner on the three straight lines. Then I want you to click on settings and privacy. When you're at the settings and privacy, I want you to scroll down to the section that is called activity center. Okay. Here, the last option will be manage post visibility. When you click on it, you will see all your content and you will see which content is available for everyone as you can see the first one is available for everyone the second option is which posts are available for friends only and the third option is which posts are available only for me well what why this matters how you can actually fix it well for example let's say i want to change the visibility of this post over here then you want to click next and this is how I can actually change the visibility of the post. I can make this post from publicly available for everyone to be available only for friends, meaning followers that I follow back. People that just follow me and I'm not following them back are not considered friends. You got that? And I can also change the visibility from public to only me. And this is how you change the visibility on the post. If you guys want to do an ultimate checkout, well, then you have to check all the videos that we want to change, right? And then you have to repeat the process. Unfortunately, they don't, they don't have this option where you can actually select all of them. Then let's take the first video that we're going to get recommended for. You hold your finger in the middle of the screen until you have this menu pop up. Then you can scroll left and right, depending on the version that you have. 
then you have this option over here playback speed now we can actually click on 0 0.5 so this will make the video much slower as you can see things are moving very very slowly then i hold again and then click on the playback speed remember to launch this menu you have to press in the middle of the screen while the video is playing then you're gonna get this menu let's let's try the other side of the equation let's press the double x speed now we're looking things are moving very very fast things are simply elevating and you can probably watch much faster as long as you don't have to listen i presume again how are we gonna stop this put your finger in the middle of the screen and hold it until you see this actual menu pop out let's put it back to normal and essentially that's it guys subscribe and come back for more hi guys in this video i'm going to show you how to delete your tiktok search history first thing you want to do you want to launch the tiktok app then you want to click on the lower right corner where you see the profile icon when you're on your profile you're gonna head to the top right corner and click on the three straight lines then you want to click on settings and privacy the last option then you want to scroll down and you want to click on activity center when you're on activity center you will find your search history the third option click on it now you can actually click and delete for example select and we can delete the first search query this is how you can go about it if you want to delete multiple if not all of your search queries on tiktok this is how we're gonna go about it you click on the top right corner you click select okay then i want you to look at the lower left corner there is a special menu that just pop up right you click on select all search history and then you're gonna click delete all you see what this is going to do delete all search queries in the past 180 days this is very very good guys you might see that this is uh, essentially you have a six month uh, period in which everything that you search simply will be deleted and i gotta mention that this action cannot be undone when you click it like i'm gonna do done your search history on tiktok has been deleted you're welcome guys this is how simple it is to clean and delete your search history on tiktok for more tips and tricks subscribe and follow for more hi guys in this video i'm going to show you how to block someone on tiktok first thing let's launch the tiktok app then you want to head to the feed of tiktok let's find somebody that you want to block let's say we want to block this particular page over here what you want to do you want to head to the top right corner where you see the small arrow okay you click on the arrow and here you can find an option which is on the third row the second menu which will be block if you click block this is what is going to happen with this account this will not be able to send you messages to see your photos to see your post this does not include extend, extended scenarios like the multi-host live streams, uh, duets posted by others, groups, chats, and both participating. They will not be notified that you block them. This is very important. A lot of people are looking for options to block someone without them being notified. So, for example, if you're not friends, right, if you didn't have follow and follow back prior, if this person, you know, not look back and try to find you, and see that you know they cannot find you because you block them this is not going to be the case they're not going to be able to see your posts your photos and if you really want to hide yourself your content and your profile from them you don't want to be together or you don't want to be part of the multi live streams because they're going to see you in the multi live streams according to tiktok also you don't want to be part of duets that is posted by others you can create your own duet with somebody else and you're gonna publish the duet and the person you block they're not gonna see it because it's published by you don't participate in duets that it's gonna be hosted and published by third party account because you're gonna be seen this is how to block someone on tiktok for more tips and tricks like this guys subscribe and follow for more
Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to enable dark mode on Facebook. Let's launch the Facebook app. You want to head to the top right corner where you see the gear icon on your profile. Then slowly but steadily you want to scroll all the way down to the section preferences. The last option in the section preferences is essentially dark mode. When you click on it, you will have a couple of options. First of all, you have the option to turn it on and you have the option to turn it off. The third option over here is that the Facebook will match the theme that you currently have on your device. In my case, this is iPhone. So if I click the theme, I have a dark mode on my phone generally. So this is what the Facebook app will do, will simply match the theme on your phone. So you will not have an issue, right, moving from dark theme on your device to bright theme here on the Facebook app. I advise you to do the same thing on each and every app. There is a setting, similar one on Instagram. Uh, you can do the same thing when you go and use X, the Twitter. And each and every app will simply have a very smooth transition because they all gonna have the same user experience and you're not gonna get shocked, especially if you're in the dark, late at night on the streets, right? You're moving from, you know, dark uh, user experience on your device and then you open the app and everything is, is bright and everything is like uh, kind of irritating for the eyes. So this is what I, I'm advising you guys and vice versa. If you have a bright version on your device, bright theme, right? Over here, you probably want to make sure that each and every theme on the apps that you're using is matching the theme on your phone. For more tips and tricks like this, guys, subscribe and follow for more. In this video, I'm going to show you how to delete your search history on TikTok. Simple and easy. Let's launch the TikTok app first. Click on the lower right corner on your profile. Then you want to click on the top right corner on the three straight lines. Then you want to click on settings and privacy. Then I want you to scroll down to the section that is called Activity Center. When you're at Activity Center, you want to click on Search History. As you can see over here, we haven't searched anything. Let me show you how we can fix this. For example, let's say iPhone 15 Pro, okay? We we'll just search for something. Now let's go back. Three straight lines, settings and privacy. You want to click on Activity Center. You want to click on Search History. Boom! There you have it, iPhone 15 Pro. How are we going to delete your search history? You want to click on the top right corner and you want to click Select. Then you want to tap on this individual search query that we just created. If you had a multiple different search queries, you will see on the lower left corner, there is an option that is called select all search history. Then you want to click delete all. This is going to delete 180 days worth of search history search queries. And this is how you delete your search history on TikTok. For more tips and tricks like this, guys, subscribe and follow for more. Hi, guys. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find videos that you have liked before on TikTok. Let's launch the TikTok app. I want you to go on your profile, hit the profile icon on the lower right corner. Then when you're at your own profile, I want you to focus on the settings above your images, above your content. So the first section, of course, will be the filter function, filtering the latest post to the most popular one. The second option will be the stories that you saved and they're hidden. The third option will be the videos that you reposted. The fourth option will be sounds, effects and videos that you actually saved. And guess what? The last option over here will be all the videos that you have liked. OK, this is how you're going to find. You can scroll down. And you can find all the videos that you have liked previously. For more tips and tricks like this, guys, subscribe and follow for more. Hi, guys. In this video, I'm going to show you how to share link from your profile on TikTok so you can send it to other people so they can actually follow you. So there are 
two ways to do it. Let me show you the first one. Let's launch a TikTok app. Go ahead and click on the lower right. Then go ahead and click on the upper right as well, on the three straight lines. Then I want you to click on the settings and privacy. When you're in settings and privacy, I want you to focus on the fourth option over here, which is share profile. When you click share profile, you will be able to copy the link from your account and then paste the link on Messenger or send the link straight through the Messenger. When you click on it, you will have an option with a special bar underneath and you will have all the apps that you currently have, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp. So you will be able to just send the link right from one click when you click share over here. So this is very direct way. If you really want to copy just the link, not to send the link as a message, all you got to do is to come on your profile, right over here, right? And you will see that under your profile picture, you will have a share profile button. When you click share profile button, well, you will have three options. You have the QR code, which is someone just met on the street. They can simply, uh, you know, read the QR code by opening the, the iPhone camera, right? So they can find you right away if they have the app. The second option that they give you over here is just to copy the plain link. And the third option is to share the profile as a message. Uh, I showed you the third one to send it as a message, to share it as a message. So these two are coming only if you click on your profile. So if you just want to send just a link, all you got to do is to come over here on your profile and click share profile. If you want to send it as a message, it probably will be easier just to go on the previous function like I showed you and send direct message with your actual profile. For more tips and tricks like this guys, subscribe and follow for more. Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to unblock accounts on TikTok. Very easy, very simple. You don't have to remember who you blocked. The way I'm going to show you, it's simply mind blowing. Let's dive in. So first thing you want to do is launching the TikTok app as usual. Then click on the lower right corner where is your profile. Then all you got to do is to go ahead and click on the three straight lines on the top right corner, okay? Then you want to click on settings and privacy. The best of all is that we're almost done. Next step is to click on privacy. And this is where the magic happens. I want you to slowly scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. The last option is blocked accounts. Well, there we have it. There's a bunch of accounts that uh, we've blocked previously. Now let's unblock someone over here. Click on block and the account was just unblocked. This is how simple it is actually to block again and unblock people just finding this list with blocked accounts. You don't have to remember who previously blocked and what was the, the, the handle the account or oh, you just come over here find all the accounts that previously were blocked from you and you decide who to be freed <laughs> for more tips and tricks like this guys subscribe and follow for more hi guys in this video i'm going to show you how to see people that you have blocked previously you maybe want to look to unblock some of these people so i'm going to show you where is the list of people you blocked let's launch the tiktok app first as usual, click on the lower right corner where you see your profile icon. Then you want to hit the three straight lines on the top right corner. Okay. Then I want you to click on settings and privacy. Now, pay very close attention over here, guys. I want you to pick up the second option, which is privacy. And I want you to scroll all the way to the bottom where you see an option that is called blocked accounts. When you click on it, you will find a list of people that you previously block. And now you have the magic power to unblock them if you really want to do that. But essentially, guys, this is how you could see all the people that you previously blocked in one place. For more tips and tricks like this, guys, subscribe and come back for more. In this video, I'm going to show you how to delete your TikTok account. After the recent updates, guys, there are a few differences. Let me show you. Let's launch the TikTok app. First thing you want to do, you want to click on the lower right corner and hit the profile picture. Then I want you to go ahead and click on the three straight lines on the top right corner. 
Then select settings in privacy. Now I want you to click on account. When you're at account, the last option that you will see over here will be deactivate or delete your account. When you click on that, you will have two options to delete your account immediately and you will have 30 days grace period in which you have the availability to come back and recover your account by simply logging in. If you click deactivate account, well, simply your account will not be available for the public. Your content will not be available for the public, but the whole information will be saved up in your account. This means that you can take a break as much as you want uh, by deactivating your account and you can come back at any time you want. No issues, no problem with it. But when you click delete, you have 30 days to make your mind, right? If you want to change your mind, you have 30 days. Also, very important note over here, guys, is that if you want to delete your account, you want to make sure that you download your data. You have to make a special request to TikTok and they will need two, three, four days maybe to process your information. And then they will give you an option to download the info. So first of all, you have to request information, download your information, and then you can click delete. You want to scroll through your feed. Let's say we want to download this video, right? You want to click on the arrow over here under the comment section. You get three menus popping out. You see one, two, three. You want to click on the second one over here and you want to click on the blue icon copy link. Okay. And I want you to head on Google Chrome and I want you to look for this app over here. It's called Snaptic. Snaptic will offer you downloading videos for free without watermark. You want to click on Snaptic. You want to hit this uh, search box, right? And I want you to paste the link that we just copied. Then I want to hit paste. Then you click download. As you can see, the app processed very fast, the actual video. And you have two options over here to download in different qualities. Uh, I just want to give you a quick heads up. Be very careful where you're clicking, okay? Make sure that you click on the right button over here. But this is how you download for free videos from TikTok without watermark. Let's say I'm going to go on GitHub, okay? And I'm going to search up Maze C++. Let's just search that up. And I'm going to write Maze C++. And once you write that, look at this. You can start getting Maze generators. Let's say we have this Maze generator and this person created it in the C++ area. We're going to go in this. So it's a recursive backtracker Maze generator. And this person has, you know, explained it. So this is the maze generator. You're going to write that and look at that. It's going to generate a whole maze that uh, you can work in. You can walk through it. You get the dependency. You get the compiling. It gives you the whole code over here as well with the files. So, you know, you can actually get the whole code by copying it and installing it. You can go to the actual file to get the code for yourself as well. And uh, that was that is what GitHub mainly is for. So upload code, get code, and you know just talk with other people regarding coding. And that is basically about it. So that's GitHub. Thank you for watching, and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Trello tutorial: How to use Trello. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to be quickly showing you on how you can use Trello for yourself in the easiest and most simplest ways possible. So to do this, what you're going to do is, first of all, you're going to come to Trello.com, create an account. Now, to use Trello, what you're going to do is you're going to click on create, and you can actually create a board. So you're going to click on create a board, and once you click on create a board, you're you know going to answer any board title for yourself and uh, get that board up and running. Now, once you get that board up and running, so let's say I have created this board for myself, right? I'm going to go straight into this board. It's going to look somewhat like this, okay? Now, how do you add things in this? So to add components, First of all, you're going to click on list and look at that. You can add lists for yourself. So, you know, it's pretty easy to add lists. Then in the lists, you can add cards and just keep on adding more cards. And to edit those cards, you're going to click on them and uh, you can change their descriptions. You can change their activity statuses and uh, you can change every other aspect of it, like members, labels, checklist, dates, attachment, cover, custom fields, dependency, estimation, and all these things. You know, pretty straightforward and pretty easy stuff to get your head around and that is how you're going to use Trello. 
So thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. MailChimp tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about MailChimp and how you can use this absolutely incredible software. Okay. So to start off with MailChimp, what you are going to want to be doing is obviously you're going to, you know, sign up with an account. Now, what is MailChimp used for? MailChimp, in my opinion, is best for any type of email marketing that you want to, you know, do for yourself. It's great for any type of, um, you know, sales CRM. It's great for lead generation. It's good for your sales. It's good for getting your company up and running. And the best part about this is that it actually has a free platform to sign in with. So you can sign up with it pretty easily. Okay, just go into sign up for free. Now, once you go into sign up for free, it takes you into the actual sign up gig where, you know, add your very own business email that you want to to sign up with MailChimp. Let's say I'm going to add that. Then you have, you know, your username and then you can add your very own password as well. OK, after adding your password, you're going to verify everything. And once you verify everything from there, it's going to take you into the actual you could say uh, work ethic and work uh, section of MailChimp. And that's basically how you're going to get started with it. Now, when it comes to using MailChimp, you are going to want to make sure to get a hold of uh, a lot of, uh, you could say, um, generative assistance. You can convert with email automations, create faster with generative AI, refine with segmentation, optimize with analytical things and support. You can get started easily with a personalized product tour. Okay, they give you a proper product tour. And you can see you can create actual custom journeys with automations. You can discover new ways to automate for yourself. Keep your email relevant and brand growing. And the thing is that the campaigning gives you a lot of great templates to work with, which is also pretty incredible. And you can add as many leads as you want, get as many contacts, as many customers, and as many users you want in this. Okay, and that gives you a really good general idea of how you're going to work with this. That's pretty much about it. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you in the next video. Goodbye. Miro tutorial for beginners. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be quickly showing you Miro and how you can use this absolutely incredible software for yourself. Okay. So Miro is basically, as it says, a visual workspace for innovation. So Miro allows you to create these different charts. It allows you to create these different types of boards. Okay. And in those boards, you can use different elements like shapes, sticky notes, and all these other things to create a good workspace. And you can also use different boards like Kanban boards and all. And the best part about this is that you can make a whole funnel, a sales flow, and like a whole lot of other things to work with. So I would definitely urge users out there to use the software because it's absolutely incredible to get a good idea of this. And it has a lot of integrations to work with as well. So definitely go ahead with this. And I'm also going to discuss the pricings. Now, Miro also gives you things like product management, engineering. It's for IT teams, UX and design, consultation and agencies. And there's a lot of great technical diagramming, whiteboarding, wireframing, mind mapping, retrospectives, scale product planning, and process mapping. So there's a lot of great things to take from Miro. And definitely, all of you users out there should use this for yourself it's the amazing and the most greatest thing to get for yourself then you have four plans for this as well you have free starter business enterprise okay so the free plan is zero dollars starter plan is eight dollars business plan is sixteen dollars and enterprise plan is obviously the basic typical enterprise plan okay and uh, yeah that's the general idea that you need to get when you're working with uh, something like this and that is basically your Miro. So thank you for watching all the way till the end and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Slack tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Slack and how you can use this absolutely amazing application for yourself to, you know, do your actual workspace editing in, to manage your products, manage your tasks and keep your team up and running. So this is Slack basically. Okay. So in Slack, you're going to make a workspace. So as you can see, I'm in this workspace right now. Now in this workspace, we have channels. Okay, you create channels for yourself and you can create more channels by clicking on create a channel and, uh, you know, add any type of channel you want to. And if you want any assistance, you can do that as well. But as you can see, I have all these channels. So links, team chat, uh, you have work and all these things. So let's say in team chat, I want to, you know, I'm going to write something like, uh, hi guys. And uh, then you can actually, you know, do an at and, uh, you know, message everyone. So it's pretty easy. 
It's pretty simple. And uh, it's uh, really nice to get a basic idea of how you're going to work with Slack. So just create channels. And in those channels, you're going to start working. Now, if you want to invite people to your workspace, what you are going to want to be doing is you're going to go to your workspace over here. Now, whoever has control of the workspace, what you can do is you can start adding people into a certain chat. So you're going to click on add coworkers, enter their name or email, and just send them an invite. And that should be it. So that's basically the idea of Slack. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Smartsheet tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Smartsheet and how you can use this absolutely incredible software. Okay, so Smartsheet is basically a flexible solution for your work. Now, it's very similar to products like ClickUp, Monday.com, Asana, Trello. Now, the reason for that is that it's great for your work management. OK, it's a great management platform. It's great for task management, great for project management. Even if you want to, you know, manage your personal life, it's good for that because it gives you things like automations, digital assets, resource, team collab, dashboards, portfolio, proofing, account, intelligent workflows, integration, no code work apps, and a whole lot more. So it gives you a whole repertoire to work with. It gives you the whole, you know, uh, you could say working standard to get your head around and it helps you a lot in working. So do make sure to get your head wrapped around this pretty well because it's an absolutely amazing software to use. And I would urge all you users out there to get a good grasp of this, to get a good idea of this because like products like Smartsheet will help you tons. Okay. So that's pretty much the main idea about Smartsheet. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Reich tutorial. Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be quickly talking about Reich and how you can use this platform for yourself. It's one platform to streamline all workflows for you, a single app for all departments. You can manage projects, organize work, integrate all your favorite tools and collaborate and drive efficiency for yourself. So Reich is your, you know, team dashboard or team planning statement where you can actually mess around with different components of your work. OK, and uh, you can actually use Reich in a different ways. So if you've used, you know, stuff like Monday.com or you've used Asana or you've used ClickUp, then Reich will also work greatly for you. And trust me, Reich works great. It has automation. It has Gantt charts, project resource planning, and it has a great visualized dashboard where you can get tasks, processors, and a lot more. So you can see that you can get your analytics in this section as well. And these are all the organizations that use Reich. So there's PNG, Sega, Lyft, Simons, Pfizer, Ogilvy, T-Mobile. So you know you have a lot of features and brands using these. Then you can auto-organize your intake, custom build for your teams, gain big pictures, visibility, customer success stories. You get Aerotech, Fitbit, Inspiration. All these people use it. And it has great reviews as well. So it's great to start off with it. It's great to use. And you can actually see why Reich. So it has great marketing, professional services, PMO, creative design, also has a great CMS. Uh, you get task management, workflow management, and the best thing, project management, where you can plan agile products. Now, planning projects for yourself is a different way to work as well, because you are going to want to make sure that the management works incredibly and the management works normally when you're actually getting the basic concept and basic idea of this. OK, so that's pretty much about it when it comes to Reich. So thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.